It is often said that the most important decision that you will ever make is who you decide to settle down with. Yet, do you ever find it interesting how easily and quickly some people slide into their relationships without truly thinking it through? So in this video, I hope to provide you with a mental framework that can help you determine whether you and your partner can go the distance, as well as a few core principles for building a healthy relationship. So before I get into it, I should mention that the content of this video should apply to relationships of all lengths. So whether it's your third date or you've been together for 10 years, this should add some clarity to your situation at the very least. So how this content is going to be structured is that first I'm going to go through three core ideas or fundamental concepts that is essential to building and sustaining a healthy relationship. And then I'm going to walk through 10 questions that's kind of aimed to be a self-assessment that you can ask yourself that will give you an idea of the potential of your relationship. So the first idea is that of the honeymoon phase. So if you don't already know, the honeymoon phase occurs towards the start of a relationship. And this is the stage where things are very exciting, exhilarating, and even euphoric. Usually this means that you can't stop thinking about the other person, and you constantly want to spend time with them in order to get to know them more. One of the telling signs of the honeymoon phase is the spark. And if you've experienced it, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's that inner feeling of the butterflies and the excitement at the thought of spending time with this particular person. The thing about the honeymoon phase is it's filled with positive emotion, but really what the main driving force is for the honeymoon phase and the spark is uncertainty. I think this is an important idea to understand because if you associate that feeling and the spark with love itself, then you're only gonna be disappointed when that eventually fades away. The reason why it fades away is like I said, it's associated with uncertainty. So as you start to fill in the blanks and get to know your partner in more detail, you start to have less uncertainty and therefore the excitement could potentially fade away. That is, unless you replace it with a deeper and more meaningful form of love, which is that of reciprocity and commitment. In many ways, the natural evolution of love is that it starts off being driven mainly by feelings and emotions and then eventually it blossoms into something that is more deliberate and action-based. Essentially, the love of getting to know them gets superseded by the love of who they are. The next core concept is the inputs of a relationship or the 80-20 rule. This says that 20% of a successful relationship is what you find and the remaining 80% is what you build together. The only thing that this particular idea doesn't fully explain is that the 80% of what you build is built on top of the 20% that you find. So the incorrect interpretation of this rule is that who you find or who you end up choosing as a partner doesn't really matter as long as you put in the effort. But I think a more accurate and helpful interpretation is that you need the right raw ingredients, but the successful relationship itself is built up over time with mutual effort. In other words, it requires a willingness from both sides in order to build something successful and fulfilling. The analogy I like for this one is that the person you choose is equivalent to the plot of land that you choose to build your house on, and the relationship is the house itself. And the last core concept is what is known as the region beta paradox, and it sounds complicated, but let me explain. If you think of a scale from say zero to 10, where 10 is amazing and zero is terrible, Sometimes things actually need to be worse off before you end up making a change that leads to something better down the line. So for example, let's say you're in a job that was say four out of 10. Maybe for you, four out of 10 is not very good, but it's not actually bad enough for you to leave that particular job because you latch on to the idea of security and the thought of you trying out for interviews for other roles might be a daunting idea. But the same is true for relationships. And in many ways, the worst kind of relationship is the four or five out of 10 relationship because it's never gonna be good enough to allow you to thrive or to truly fulfill you, but it's not gonna be bad enough for you to leave and find a better one. This is why, for example, people who are actually in four out of 10 relationships often stay in them until something happens, which makes it get worse. And unfortunately, this could be something like cheating or some kind of abuse. Once this trigger point happens, then the relationship gets worse and it gets worse to a point where they actually do something about it. From what I can tell, one of the main reasons that keeps people in one of these situations is low self-esteem. And this could be either because their partner has made them feel small or that they couldn't find someone else, 
or it could just mean that they become comfortable in a relationship and don't actually feel that there's something else that's better out there. I have made a video in the past all about toxic relationships, so feel free to check that out if you're interested. The other main reason why things can plummet into a mediocre or worse relationship is an overall lack of compatibility. And this is also something that I've covered in other videos, what to look for and the kinds of traits that sustain long-term healthy relationships. So now I'm gonna go through 10 questions and hopefully this will give you the right kind of mental framework to be able to help you come to terms with your overall relationship, how you feel about it and what may come in the future. The first one is if someone told you you're a lot like your partner, would this be a compliment to you? The next one is if you found yourself in a moment of crisis, would your partner be one of the first people you go to for help or support? Are you truly fulfilled in your relationship or just less lonely? Do you naturally want to make an effort for your partner or does it usually feel like a chore or obligation? Are you able to be unapologetically yourself or do you feel the need to show up differently to please your partner? Are you able to give and receive constructive feedback with your partner or does it constantly feel like you're walking on eggshells? Are you in love with your partner right now as a whole or are you only in love with their good side, their potential or the idea of them? In the event of a disagreement or argument, is the atmosphere more about winning or getting to a solution that you both agree on? Would you want your future or imagined child to date someone like your partner? If you take away physical attraction from the equation, would you still want to spend a significant amount of time with them and you think that you will both end up being better off as a result? When you take the time to think about these questions in depth, it's important to realize that not all of them are a reflection of the quality of your partner. It could also be a reflection of the quality of the dynamic between you. But equally, it does take some humility and introspection to acknowledge your role in all of this and what you could do to better yourself and the relationship as a whole. So I hope you found this informative. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.